So, do you know why the ocean is salty? We didn't know the reason until 1979. The whole planet is covered with ocean, and we had no idea where all that salt comes from. We initially thought rivers were to blame because they can carry deposits and chemicals to the still waters. It wasn't until the late 1970s when scientists stumbled upon so-called black smokers that we realized they were the cause of the salty waters. They are, in fact, geothermal vents located along the mid-ocean ridge. They were generated from sediments of iron sulfide from deep within the Earth's core. Okay, remember dinosaurs? I don't. I wasn't around then. But they disappeared a long time ago. Yet how that happened was still up for debate within the scientific community for a very long time. Up until 1991, no less, the year the Chicxulub Crater was discovered. That's a big hole located underneath the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Many claim it was formed when a giant asteroid crashed on Earth. The oldest material ever found on our planet turns out to be older than our entire solar system. The Murchison meteorite plopped into Australia back in September 1969. But we made this staggering discovery after a newer analysis of its debris was done only in 2020. Did you know that there is a coral skyscraper hidden underneath the ocean and we had no idea? Only in 2020, a team of Australian scientists stumbled upon it when mapping the northern Great Barrier Reef. It's 1,640 feet tall, which, if you think about it, makes it taller than the Empire State Building. And no elevators. Do you know how mountains appeared? We didn't know that until 1966. And that also concerns earthquakes and volcanoes. Just think about it. We sent men into space before we even understood how and why the Earth under our feet started moving now and then. Only in 1966, a scientist named J. Tuzo Wilson published a piece in the journal Nature in which he explained that continents and oceans are constantly moving. He also wrote about tectonic activity, meaning things like earthquakes and how mountains rose from the Earth's surface. Until 2021, we hadn't mapped out a full human genome sequence. The concept of DNA was first presented by a Swiss scientist back in 1869. But specialists remained partially in the dark as to DNA's physical structure until Rosalind Franklin and Raymond Gosling took pictures of it and found it looked like two twisting strands. Ever wonder what the largest living organism in the world was? For a long time, scientists did too, because they only stumbled upon it in 2000. It's a fungus that lives 3 feet underground, but is estimated to spread across 2,200 acres. Located in the Malheur National Forest in the Blue Mountains of Eastern Oregon, it's named the Honey Mushroom. Until 2002, we didn't know what was at the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. We knew we were rotating around something. But it took us until the 21st century to figure out it was a supermassive black hole, with a mass 4 million times bigger than our Sun, located in a region of the Milky Way called Sagittarius A star. The discovery took place after we came up with the infrared smoke alarm. I can hardly imagine having to travel long distances without wheeled luggage. But these didn't pop up until 1970. If you think about it, the astronauts who went to the moon actually had to carry their baggage in the spaceship physically. The application for the U.S. patent for the wheeled luggage was granted back in 1972. But to be fair, those first ones weren't exceptionally reliable. They had problems like wobbling and tipping because the large suitcases were mounted on narrow wheeled bottoms. If you look at pictures of 1940s film stars, you'll see that their hair was nice and slicked back. Did you know that based on recent discoveries, even ancient Egyptians used some hair-molding substance? What they used, though, wasn't hair gel, if that's what you're thinking, because we only came up with this invention in the 1960s. What people used for hairstyling back then in the 1940s was called Brill Cream, which had more of a waxy consistency and was invented in 1929. Hair gel, as we know it today, came a bit later and was invented by a man named Louis Montoya. It soon became trendy because it wasn't as greasy as previous products. Speaking of bathrooms, and I am about to, back in ancient Roman times, they used some sort of, uh, well, wiping devices. But they were sticks with a sponge on top. 
individually perfumed sheets of paper that had the same purpose, appear to have been documented in China back in 589 CE. However, in the US, medicated paper for the water closet was marketed in the late 1850s, but the soft and comfortable variant of toilet paper was commercialized only in the 1930s, with the added bonus of being completely splinter-free. And I think we can all appreciate that. This one may not seem so recent, but hear me out. Modern research revealed that Saturn's rings are less than 100 million years old or so. That may seem like a lot, but if you think that the solar system formed about 4.5 billion years ago, it does shift your perception a bit, right? There are species of sharks on Earth that have been around in our waters four times longer than Saturn's rings. We figured this out using recent data regarding the mass of Saturn's rings and their ratio of dust and ice. With many of us resorting to e-commerce more and more these days, it's challenging to look at the traditional supermarket as some revolutionary invention. But we didn't have these for as long as you'd think, either. Do you know how the first supermarket appeared? Well, back in 1916, a shop owner named Clarence Saunders needed a solution to make his job less labor-intensive, since shopping around then meant he had to pick out all the products from the aisles and even deliver them to customers. So he thought about a new shop layout with a turnstile entry. People had to browse the shop in a single direction. He also made sure they were passing by all the available products. Customers could pick their items themselves and had to take their produce home. The shop owner could lower his prices with added efficiency, since he needed fewer people to run the business. Did you know there's still a state in the US where wearing a seatbelt isn't mandatory? Historically, using a seatbelt was voluntary. But people being the way they were, safety needed some enforcement. The state of New York was the first one to pass a law that enforced seatbelt wearing while driving, but only on December 1, 1984. Still, to this day in New Hampshire, there are no laws on the matter. The modern can opener, the one with the spinning wheel, was first introduced to the market in 1870. Now, that may not be remarkable, but it seems odd when you think canned foods were already available for some decades. Before this invention, we were told to literally cut around the top of the can near the outer edge with a chisel and hammer. You got a meal and an excellent workout all in one. Did you know that standardized time became enforceable by law only in 1880? The current system that we use now, GMT, for Greenwich Mean Time, became a common practice in most countries even later, somewhere by the end of the 1920s. Now, we used to estimate what time it was by looking at the sun's position in the sky. We then evolved to using clocks, but they were still dependent on the sun's position in a particular town or village. That meant time could differ slightly between two neighboring communities. And it wasn't that big of a deal for us until the invention of trains. As we started to travel faster and on longer distances, we needed to figure out a way to know when a train would leave and reach a certain destination, which could be helpful for all travelers in various locations. And frankly, it was about time. Now, did you know that there's an astronomical object in which space and time actually swap places? How does that work? And what exactly does swapping space and time mean? Well, let's figure it out. Imagine that you're on a spacecraft. The vehicle can only move straight. Your path leads to some inevitable point, and you have no idea what lies ahead. You can only hope that it won't be too bad. Meanwhile, everything around you is complete madness. A chaotic collage of many historical events. What do you see? Ancient humans and dinosaurs? The birth of the universe? A uh, future? Who knows? That's what the universe would look like if we swapped time and space. And theoretically, this is what you would see if you fell into a black hole and somehow were able to survive. But how is something like this even possible? First of all, let's discuss time and space. Imagine drawing a light bulb on a sheet of paper. Then grab one more sheet and draw how it lit up. Right now, it's just a small circle of light. Another sheet? The circle of light is growing. It gets bigger and bigger in size, until finally, it turns into a giant circle. In real life, 
the bulb lights up in the blink of an eye. That's because the speed of light is the fastest in the universe. But here, on our drawings, we capture the propagation of light frame by frame. We see how, over time, the light has grown from a small dot to a large circle. But if you connect these circles, doesn't it remind you of some shape? For example, a cone? Yes, exactly! This is called a light cone, and time is the central axis of this cone. Why? Because light turns from a small dot into a large circle over time. To remember it, let's draw a time vector, an arrow inside the cone. It goes from the past to the future. Meanwhile, the circles are space. In space, we can move however we want, in any direction. We can move up or down, in zigzags, and so on. But no matter what zigzags we draw, along the timeline, we're always moving forward. We can't turn back in time, and we can't stop it. This helps us define time and space. Time is the direction in which the light cone is oriented. This is the direction where all our paths lead, and where our future inevitably lies. And space is the whole variety of directions perpendicular to the timeline. This is a straightforward graph. If it could be applied to the entire universe, then time would flow the same everywhere. However, if you've watched at least some popular sci-fi movies, you know that this isn't the case. In reality, time can be crazy. For example, if you're chilling near a black hole, what will be two hours for you may turn out to be 20 years for your friend on Earth. But why? Well, take a deep breath. Now gravity comes into play. Oh, I know about gravity. It's that thing that helps me to stand on the ground, you may think. But it's much, much more complicated than that. Gravity is one of the basic physical forces in our world, and it's incredibly powerful. In fact, she's such a girl boss that she can distort space and time. She can literally influence the speed of time like an almighty wizard. How? Well, let's take something slightly bigger than a light bulb. For example, a supernova. (laughs) Somewhere in the universe, a star has just made a boom. How do we know about it? Well, nothing in the universe, no sound, no radio waves, nothing, travels faster than light. So we'll know about the birth of a supernova only when we see it. And this will happen only when its light cone grows enough and reaches our planet. So the light cone grows and grows. So far, everything is fine. And finally, it reaches our planet. But there's a catch. You see, our planet is very massive, very massive, and it has pretty strong gravity. What happens then? Gravity changes the direction of the light cone. It begins to attract the cone to the center of our planet. And with it, it also attracts our arrow of time. That means it slows the time down. And the closer the light cone is to us, the more the arrow bends and the slower time goes. What does it mean? Well, for example, the fact that the watch on your ankle will lag behind the watch on your wrist, that your head is aging faster than your legs, and that astronauts in Earth's orbit age a little slower than people on Earth. This is what scientists call general relativity. Right. But how does this relate to our topic? How can we understand what will happen if we swap space and time? Nah, don't worry, we're almost there. Now, imagine a cosmic body with incredibly strong gravity. It bends time and space so much that it feels like they swap. This is a black hole. A black hole attracts absolutely everything to its center. No stars, planets, no light can escape from there. Let's say our light cone is approaching it. First, as usual, time begins to bend toward the center of the black hole, attracted by its gravity. But the gravity is very strong, so it bends more and more. And time goes slower and slower the closer you're to the center. In the end, the light cone crosses the boundary of the black hole, the so-called event horizon. At this point, it gets so distorted that now it's literally pointing downwards. We can say that time has changed its direction. Time is pointing downwards. What kind of nonsense is that, you may ask? It'll be easier to explain in a real example. Imagine you're a crazy astronaut who decided to jump into a black hole. And there's an observer in the spaceship who watches you doing this for some reason. At first, for you, nothing changes. You look at your watch, you see that 5 minutes have passed, and everything's okay. But for the observer, 
First of all, you'll fall for a very long time. The observer has been sitting there for 50 years, and you're still falling. All because your time has slowed down. Secondly, since space is also distorted near the black hole, the observer will see how you'll begin to stretch like spaghetti. This is a scientific term, by the way. It's called spaghettification. And then you finally cross the event horizon. The observer doesn't see you anymore. Light cannot escape from a black hole, so your image won't reach the observer even if you're still inside. And what about you? What if you somehow survived? Remember, the time arrow is pointing to the center of the black hole. What does it mean? It means that now, the center of the black hole is your future. It isn't a place, it's a fate that you can't change. And wherever you came from, as well as the rest of the universe, no longer exists for you. Because now, it's not a place, but an event from the past. And since you can't turn back time, you'll never be able to come back. But what is around you? complete chaos. The rays of light now move in all directions, forward, backward, and so on. The rays depicting the events of the past, the future, the present, all this is moving around you. In reality, space and time didn't swap places, but it feels like they did. Because in space, you can now only move forward, as if along a straight line. And time, reflected in the light rays, surrounds you everywhere and moves in all possible directions. And here we go back to the beginning. This horrifying example helps us imagine what it would feel like if time and space got reversed. Of course, all this is just theories and guesses. The very idea that we're moving in some one direction, the one we haven't chosen, and there's complete time chaos around, sounds quite frightening. And yet, it would be a very interesting experience. Sounds dangerous. Mm, Why don't you go first? Emergency lights are going off, sirens blaring, the spaceship is shaking like crazy. The cosmic darkness beyond the portholes is illuminated by pulsating flashes. The astronauts are strapping themselves in and looking at the screens, cold sweat breaking on their foreheads. Straight ahead, space is cut in half by a blinding beam. Nothing in the universe can stop it. It looks like a humongous airplane jet stream millions of times more powerful than any jet could make. There's no way to go around it. The leader of the space expedition orders everyone to turn around immediately. That was a black hole jet, a real monster of space. The holes, like huge vacuum cleaners, swallow everything that falls beyond their event horizon, the boundary between space-time and the place where it disappears. If you find yourself close to this border, You're doomed. Even light can't escape the gravity of a black hole, and it's the fastest thing in the universe. The holes not only absorb matter, but also shoot jets into space. Mysterious beams thousands of light years long. There are no black monsters near the Earth. But let's imagine if one suddenly popped up close to the sun. The hole immediately starts devouring the star, Strong gravity pulls one side of the sun more than the other. The hole tears the sun into ribbons, eating it just as you would eat spaghetti off your plate. Physicists call this phenomenon spaghettification. When the monsters finished its meal, it hiccups, and, like laser swords, two jets cut our galaxy in half. Astronomers are observing a similar catastrophe right now, billions of light years away from us. A black hole from the 3C321 system is bombarding a nearby galaxy with a jet of X-rays, gamma rays, and electrons accelerated to the speed of light. The onslaught has been going on for a million years, and we're lucky it's taking place at a safe distance. If a jet comes close to a planet similar to Earth, It'll vaporize the atmosphere and the ozone layer. All life on the surface will disappear. Only deep underground dwellers will survive. If a black hole does appear next to the sun, though, we won't live long enough to see the jet. The monster will absorb the energy of the star, and we'll simply lose all heat and light. The Earth will cool down, delving into eternal darkness. But like anything else, 
jets can do good things too. Like fertilizers helping crops to grow, the energy of the rays squeeze the space clouds and new stars will be born from them. Imagine a drain in the bathroom through which water flows into a pipe. The water moves in a spiral and some of it rotates around the hole. Now imagine that the black hole is the same drain and instead of water, there's the stuff called plasma. It spins rapidly, gets magnetized, and collects into a huge accretion disk. Plasma starts to glow, and at some point, shoots two streams into space. The black hole V404 Cygni lies 8,000 light years away. It's like a firework display that weighs as much as 10 suns. The problem is, they forgot to install it securely and the wick was prematurely set on fire. The hole is powered by gas from a nearby star. It provides infinite charges for the space fireworks. The V404 Cygni jets don't just fire from the poles, but in every direction, a disk as wide as seven suns is spinning around the black hole. The inside of the disk is wobbling like a top that's about to stop spinning and fall. Scientists believe the wobbles and random shots are caused by distortions of the space-time continuum. Black holes are not the only ones who know how to put on a space show. Their main competitors are gamma-ray bursts. Science doesn't know exactly how they appear. Most likely, it's because of the decay of a huge star or the collision of neutron stars. Satellites record one gamma-ray burst every day, but at least 500 outbreaks occur in the universe within the same time period. An amateur astronomer first seeing the observable universe may feel like a movie star on the red carpet. Only, they'll be blinded not by the lights from the cameras of journalists and fans, but by constant gamma-ray bursts. If there is a flash near the Earth, our planet will feel like a candle in a snowstorm. Imagine that you live in the future and can take off on safe interstellar flights. On your spaceship, you fly to a planet that looks like Earth to see a gamma ray burst with your own eyes. Your ship is cutting into outer space and landing on the planet in question. As soon as you step on its soil though, you feel it. Every living thing in this world is waiting for something terrible to happen. Frightened birds are flying through the sky. Animals start running out of the forests and looking for shelter. The wind makes the leaves rustle, and it's like they're whispering to you, save yourself, get out of here. Then, the wind grows stronger and turns into a storm. A bright flash appears on the horizon. After a few seconds, the light intensifies. Someone huge has turned on space floodlights. Everything is lost. There is only light. As much energy is released in one second as our sun generates in 10 billion years. 10 seconds pass and the show is over. The planet is moving through space and the flash has only hit a part of its southern hemisphere. But that's enough for things to go badly. The gamma ray burst was a pretty short one so it probably wouldn't have vaporized the oceans or blown away the atmosphere. But the ozone layer, which protects the planet from the rays of the nearest star and cosmic radiation, still disappears. All life in this world abruptly ends. The picture is terrible, but there's no need for us to panic just yet. Scientists believe the probability of a similar catastrophe on our planet is zero. But the Earth hasn't always been so lucky. The Ordovician extinction occurred 450 million years ago. Perhaps a gamma ray burst was to blame. Its epicenter was 6,000 light years away from Earth. Harmful UV light hit the planet's surface, reducing the ozone layer by 40%. More than half the plants and animals disappeared. But life continued to develop. And after 200 million years, dinosaurs began roaming the planet. Eta Carina is a hypergiant double star. It's almost 200 times heavier than the sun, and in 10 seconds, it emits as much light as the sun in a year. 
It's as far as 7,500 light years away from Earth. But in 1843, dwellers of our planet saw it in the night sky without telescopes. This was possible thanks to an explosion. These beautiful clouds of gas and dust are the consequences of those events. We can say these are huge ruins of a star, but they look cool. Over the next one million years, Eta Carina will continue exploding and form a gamma ray burst. But even here, humanity needn't worry. The direction of the gas clouds indicates that the future burst beams won't hit the Earth. Our planet is under siege. Right now, 30 million space objects, varying in size from a grain of sand to a car, are flying towards the Earth. But our atmosphere burns all border violators. Scientists are constantly monitoring space, and they haven't found a single space rock potentially hazardous for humanity. But this doesn't mean it doesn't exist. A huge asteroid arrives to Earth once every two million years on average. Here are the surfaces of the Moon, Mars, and Mercury. Craters cover them like cheese holes. These are the tracks of asteroids that have been bombarding their surface for millions of years. An atmosphere is an excellent barrier against the rock shower from the skies. But every year, around 500 large objects still make their way through it. Most of them fall into the ocean or sparsely populated areas and remain unknown. Geological activity continues on the planet. The continents move, mountains rise and fall. As you watch this video, the landscape of the Earth is changing. All of this erases all traces of meteorites that have fallen on the planet.